Hello and welcome to Gina. In this video, we'll be looking at the concept of subspawning in our project. Basically, getting our spawners to spawn other spawners in our scene. If you haven't already checked out our previous videos we've made on Gina, it is recommended that you watch all of those before continuing with this video. Without further ado, let's get started. Subspawning can be useful for a lot of things, particularly when you're trying to spawn large, complicated structures or details. Examples of this can be found in the Asset Samples folder within Gina. First off, let us consider the church spawner. So if I spawn my church, you'll see that it has buildings, fences, and gravestones scattered around it. If we look at our prototypes for this spawner more closely, you'll notice that the spawner is performing subspawns of the gravestones. This means that we have more control over our spawn range instance count, and much more, because it's just another spawner. Let's consider another scenario using the Gaia content pack that also comes with Gina. We have these two spawners, Forest Large 1 and Forest Large 2, which spawn different layouts of our forest. So let's take a look at each one. Forest 1 creates this forest that has all these kinds of elements, whereas Forest Large 2 creates a different style, different spread of these individual prototypes. So looking at our Forest Large Master Spawner, you'll see that this spawner also makes use of the subspawning feature by combining both of those spawners into one forest spawner. So if I perform a spawn of this, both elements, both spawners have been combined to create an even more intricate forest layout. As you can see, subspawning is quite a powerful feature as it allows for more advanced setups of your Gina spawners and can be used to create large villages, forests, and much, much more. So now that we understand the incredible power of subspawning, let's try to create our own spawners that make use of this feature. To do this, I'm gonna be creating a village spawner from the ground up and also making use of decorators to enhance our capabilities of the spawner. So let's start by creating an empty game object to store our houses. I'm going to call this houses. I'm going to make sure that I'm aware of the position of the origin of this. So I'm going to place it onto the terrain just so that I can see a preview of where the houses are going to go. I'm also going to look for my houses prefabs. And I'm going to use these houses here to place onto my terrain where I want it to be. So I'm going to have one there. I'm going to have one here just rotated slightly. I'm also going to have one over here. And by the way, it's important to keep in mind where the origin is of your houses. So I haven't actually set it as a parent just yet, but I'm going to do that right now. So the center of all of these objects is going to be right there. So I'm going to grab all of these game objects and I'm going to place them underneath the houses. So now you can see that this is one group that I'm going to be spawning. So what I want to do is I want to make it so that I have a tree spawner that will spawn around the houses and ignore the houses themselves. So to do this, I'm going to create a new spawner. I'm going to create a new palette and I'm going to add a tree to my prototypes. So what tree do we have? We have the small tree set up right here. So if I shift click and start to spawn them, you can see that that's what this is going to spawn. I'm also going to add a new tree and this is gonna be a different type. I might select the spruce as my second one. So every now and then you'll see the spruce tree is gonna get spawned. These trees are a little bit small, so I'm going to increase the size of the trees spawning overall by going to my placement criteria. And let's change the scale up to 1 to 2, or 1.5 to 2 might be better. And there we go. So this is where the trees are going to be spawned. I'm also going to control the instance count, so I'm going to increase the instances by 10. So it'll spawn 10 trees. And I'm going to increase the spread as well, so the throw distance. So the throw distance should bring it outside of the area. So it should look like this every time we spawn. 
might actually want to have a little bit more. So I'm going to increase the size. And there we go. So that's, I'm very happy with that. That means that when we spawn our houses, we'll also get a sub spawner that will spawn these trees. So now that I have my tree spawner, I'm going to go to my level folder. That I'm going to create here. So I'm going to call this level. And I'm going to create a folder to store my spawners. So I'm going to just have this be in my spawners folder. I'm going to click and drag the spawner I just created as a prefab. So in order for you to create a sub spawner, they need to be a prefab to begin with. Otherwise, Gina won't know where to find the spawner if it's just a part of the scene. So now that I've created a prefab of it, I'm going to go to my hierarchy and I'm going to create a new spawner. And I'm going to use the same palette that I created earlier. And I'm going to add the houses to that spawner. So you should see under the prototypes, we've got houses as this spawner. So if I go and try and spawn this, you'll see that the houses are always going to spawn as a structure. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my sub spawner as a prototype. And this will create a reference to my sub spawner so that I can perform a tree spawn as well as a house spawn. I want to spawn them at the same time instead of one after the other. So to do this, you can switch your spawn type over to all, which will spawn all of the individual prototypes at the same time. So now when we spawn it, you'll see the houses spawn first along with the trees. So now that creates our village. And from here on in, we can just add variation to this wherever we want. Now, one of the things I don't like about this spawner is it doesn't let me flatten the ground underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to my houses. I'm going to create an empty game object. So there it is. The empty game object should be right here because I added it as a child. I'm going to call this flattener and I'm going to attach a terrain decorator to the game object. I'm going to select from a bunch of brushes that we already have in Unity. I might actually select this one. I'll increase the area of effect. So you can see that it's going to flatten the terrain underneath these houses around that area. And I'm going to save this. What you're going to do next is you're going to go to the spawner house. You're going to remove the houses prototype and the tree prototype. And we're going to re-add them again. So I'm going to go to my houses, drag it in, and you'll see that we have now a flattener underneath the houses. So every time you spawn, it should flatten the terrain underneath. And along with that, we're also going to reattach the spawner so that we can get it to spawn after the fact and make sure that your type is set to all. So now we have our village spawner that flattens and creates trees along with it. Notice how when we wanted to have a sub spawner attached, we had to attach it separately. There's actually another way to do this. So I'm going to remove the sub spawner and the houses, and we're going to go to our houses root object here and create a new empty object. This empty object will be our tree sub spawner. So the tree sub spawner is going to be located right there. And I'm going to attach a component to it called a Gina sub spawner decorator. This is a special decorator that will refer to a sub spawner that we want to spawn at this point here. I'm going to go back to our sub spawner decorator and I'm going to click and drag the spawner into this slot right here. And you can see that it's visualizing the range of where our sub spawn will be. And if we move it around, you can move where you're going to perform this spawn. Uh, I'm going to set it back to zero, zero. And now you need to make this as a prefab so that Gina knows where to find this. So I'm going to go back to our level folder. I'm going to create an empty folder called sub spawners. And I'm going to attach it as a prefab into here. Cool. So now what we've done is we have a root object that has all of our houses and a flattener at the start. So it will flatten the ground first. It will spawn the houses and then perform the sub spawner. So it's important to put it in order because this is the order that the prototypes will spawn in Gina. 
So if we go to our houses spawner without any prototypes in there, we're gonna click and drag the houses back in there and just examine what this has. So this has a flattener component. It has a, a all of our houses as product, sub prototypes. And it even has this special sub spawner prefab. So now when we perform our spawn, it should do this exact same thing as before, but we no longer have to spawn all prototypes. We can go back to random and it will do the same thing. Now the range is quite large. So if I wanted to go ahead and change it, I can go to the spawner itself, the sub spawner that it refers to this one here, and I can change the range and apply the changes to the prefab. And now that we have our changed prefab, uh, we should be able to perform the spawn without updating anything. There we go. Because it's referring to the prefab, any changes you make to the prefab will update all of the spawners that refer to it. Hence this one right here. Another way that we can visualize sub spawners is by using a builder decorator. So there is a decorator that you can attach to the root of this prototype that you're trying to make. And you can go Gina builder decorator and this will visualize all of the things underneath it including your sub spawner so the sub spawner is not being referred to here anymore so i'm going to make sure that i'm referring to it and you can see that it is actually referring to this thing uh, we also want to apply those changes because that's what i forgot to do before and when you go to the houses you can see all of the sub spawner stuff that you have underneath we can even duplicate this and move it to the side. So we have two different ones. So let's say we want to have variations uh, along the sides of our houses. So you can have like a triad set up. And now if we go back to our houses, this is what it's going to spawn. So it, once you've made updates to this, you might want to update the prototype in the spawner itself. So I'm going to click and drag that back in again and should have all three of the sub spawners. So now when I do this, you should see a lot more trees. There we go, there's all the trees. And it flattens and it performs the tree spawns. So in summary, we learned how to create sub spawners, attach them to existing spawners, and use them in our environment. We also learned how to use the Gina Builder Decorator to visualize all of the sub spawners within our prototype that we we're creating. If you wish to learn more about subspawners beyond this video, be sure to check out the documentation folder that comes with Gina. This is located under Procedure Worlds, Gina, Documentation, and you should see the Gina Pro documentation PDF that contains all the information to do with subspawning. Thanks for watching.